Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to start chapter five. So this is the overview on what we're going to be covering in chapter five. So in chapter five, we're going to be looking at complex numbers and how you can use them or if the language provide them in this languages that we're looking at. Now keep in mind that the way things are today is not the way they've always been. So for example, um, C99, as the standard of C that came out around 1999, um, added more support for complex numbers in the language. Earlier, before that, in C, you basically use complex numbers through a macro. And we're not going to talk in detail what a macro is, but basically it was just a convenient way of trying to uh, abstract an idea, right? But it wasn't an, an abstraction that was really built into the language, as in C understood what a complex number is. Um, I'll try to explain when we get there, when we start look at in the next section, when you try looking at C. But just note how today, complex using complex number in C is much easier than it was just a few, um, you know, standards ago in the language. But that's the sort of thing that we, we want to see is how do these different languages support something like complex numbers, as you will for other features of the language. And we're going to see the same thing happening. Some languages have strengths in one area, some languages make it easier and all that stuff. And then it's also depend on the focus of the language. Now there's a package called a library out there, C library called um, Fastest Fourier Transform the West, I believe, FFTW. And you can find it at fftw.org. And I really not, I only mention it because I want to say that, uh, when it comes to numerical computation, there are people who have done some really scientific, interesting scientific computation using C. Others have done things like game engine and libraries in C and C++. But then today, most people do a lot of scientific computation in a language like Python. For one reason, it's easier to get started than use. And so even though it's not probably not blazingly fast, um, like you might get with C or C++, just because of the ease of use of it and the libraries that have built up around it, like Panda Library, um, people do a lot of computation in it. So even though Python may not have originally intended to be a numerical computation library, it turned out that's how people um, use it. And I'm pretty sure the f newer, new um, versions of Python took that into consideration and started putting better and better support. Um, but again, the idea here is um, just to sort of see how it is used, something like a complex number is used in the different lang um, li languages. We're not going to get too deep. We can do simple things like just to show how to declare to complex number, how to do simple operations with them, and then again, how to print them out. And, and there we'll see how far the language goes in terms of helping you do some of these things. All right. So I look forward to seeing you in the next section, um, which I'll post a video in about two days, when we're going to take a look at C. Um, subscribe um, if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter at Straversity1. Instagram, it's Straversity. And have a great day. Bye.